Yeah. And so... I'm sorry. Monog, I don't know why you're laughing. This is the exact moment we were in before. Why is it suddenly so funny? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's okay. Welcome, travelers, to the Copper Fox Inn. Come on in, take a seat, and uh, talk with us as we discuss homebrew for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. I am Thomas the Human Bard. Joining me this week is... Bean the Rock Numb Rogue. Mercy the Sniffly Wizard. I'm sick. Sorry for my stupid voice today. <laughs> the Sniffly the race you've brought today. Yeah, I'm, the Sniffly. I brought a homebrew race. I have the Sniffly. I haven't heard of the subclass Sniffly Wizard. I'm a tiefling. I'm just a sick tiefling. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm uh, Onog the Half Orc Barbarian. When tieflings get sick, do they have like specific like you know humans get like a sore like kind of scratchy nose and mm. like watery eyes? Do tieflings get like itchy horns? Probably. I mean, but your horns are more like your fingernails, right? Like, yeah. You've never know. had itchy fingernails? Like, what? I don't know about itchy. That would be terrible because you itch with your fingernails. So it's like you can't, they can't itch themselves. It can never be. Like well, on that horrific note. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. Welcome to Existential Horror, the podcast. On this podcast, we like to talk about uh, homebrew for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. We have all more or less gone into Dungeons & Dragons with 5th edition, and we enjoy looking at strange, weird, funny stuff that people in the community have come up with and uh, chatting about it. And we want everyone to know that we love all the creativity that goes into these works, and if it ever sounds like we're making fun of the people who created them, we promise we're not. We love these creators, and we are hoping that as a podcast we can actually um, let people know about some of the really interesting and creative people in this community who put together these cool homebrews. So we very much respect and appreciate all the work that goes into these. Uh, let's start off the episode with our magic item of the week. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -ba. So this is another one from bonus underscore action. Um, and, uh, on Instagram? Yes, on Instagram. And maybe it's magic. Maybe it's Maybelline. This is Larkana, number 23. Oh, no. Oh, it is a slightly iridescent wow. shade of lilac. Okay. What what is it? Can you describe? <laughs> it's it? lipstick. It's li okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. So this is an uncommon wondrous item, and it is <laughs> arcane lipstick. <laughs> All right. Let Let's just go ahead and and just just read the text on Can here. You spell Larkana for our audience. Oh, it'll be on it, it'll, it'll be up on the screen. Oh. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Spell it anyway. L apostrophe A R C. A N A. Larkana. Larkana, number twenty-three. Okay. Oh boy. Yeah, it's great. Because so, thou art worth it. Yes, because <laughs> thou art worth it. It takes about thirty seconds to apply this lipstick, after which the effects last for eight hours or until it is removed. You can use this lipstick fifteen times before it is completely used up. That is okay. a not a lot of lipstick. I know. Most lipstick you would actually get like 300 uses out of. I was going to ask. I'm not very familiar with applying lipstick myself. Does it take about 30 seconds to apply lipstick? Is that an average time frame? Nah. It depends on how skilled you are slash yeah. how good you want it to be. Well, or how like bright or dark the lipstick is. Is like how careful you you gotta be. Not going to lie. I never wear lipstick or makeup. Mm. Like the closest I get is cherry chapstick. And so if I go to put on lipstick, I have to take a really long time <laughs> because I never put it on. Maybe if you have proficiency in, in lipsticking. Yeah. I feel like I feel like that completely depends on the person. It could take like 2 seconds or it could take like 5 minutes. Fair enough. <laughs> Um, yeah, num number 23. Whilst wearing this lipstick, you gain a plus one bonus on every ranged and melee spell attack rolls with a verbal component. If you know the charm person spell and you cast it whilst wearing this lipstick, the wisdom saving throw DC is increased by two. Oh, more charming. Mm-hmm. Mm. You're more charming. And I like the idea that, that your words are just imbued with this beautiful magic as, as it, you speak the spell. As it passes your... Ruby That's your magic lips. Sir. Not ruby, whatever I, this color is. I'd like to point out a Purple wonderful loophole I've immediately noticed. It never says you must apply this to your lips. <laughs> <laughs> you it's just, just you have to take lips? 30 seconds putting it somewhere. Put it somewhere, all over your face perhaps. Maybe drawing your name on your arm. I don't know. <laughs> whatever you're into. Yes, I think it's very fun. 
This this is a very this is a very neat little like a nice little like minor magical item. Uh, but it is also interesting to note because it takes thirty seconds. This is not a feasible in combat thing to no. do. No, no, you'd have to do it beforehand. That would take it would take five rounds of combat, and even at, at top tier play, I don't think I've ever seen a single combat go more than four rounds. Although I love the idea of someone who's so extra, they take five rounds of combat to put on their lipstick <laughs> while you're all dying. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> On that note, though, the imagery of knowing you're about to get into battle and everyone else is suiting up and you look over and the warlock has their little hand mirror and is like Putting giving just their applying lipstick, lipstick. On. <laughs> I, that's a, I love that bit. Like, it's... that's how you know that that person is getting, like, that's they're how, getting ready to yeah. throw it's down. Like, oh, it's Sharpening serious. their axes or, like, mm-hmm. you know, fletching their arrows, practicing their magic spells, and then the warlock or the, the bard or somebody just putting their lipstick on. But that's how they're getting ready. That's how they're getting sued up. I like it. I would be interested to know. um, So the abilities here are you have a plus one bonus to your spell attacks with a verbal component and charm person DC is increased by two. I'm just curious to know what are other fun flavorful abilities you could maybe trade one of those out for? Well, I'm surprised that it doesn't add anything to like persuasion or anything Mm -hmm. like that because I would feel like it might add one at least or increase or, or decrease. give advantage or somehow something. Advantage like yeah on advantage on, on just charisma checks because but persuasion checks in which you say something like not just persuasion yeah because but verbal attempts to persuade people are made a little bit easier because just you know if you if as the spells pass your lips they're more powerful just all your words it's not just that you're prettier but the fact that the words pass over this lipstick gives them a little bit more oomph. Yeah, like, it, it is magic. It's not that you just look better. Yeah, I think that there's, um, there's an interesting history in D&D of, it, it originates in some of the very first editions, of there being, like, bad puns and jokes as the spell components for a lot of spells mm-hmm. in the player's handbook. And the friends spell, um, the components, the material components are... A small amount of makeup applied to the face as the spell is cast. Mm-hmm. Which is, that, that can be replaced, I guess, by a, a magical focus. But if you don't have one, you have to put on makeup as you cast the friend spell, or it doesn't work. And that's just because putting on makeup makes it easier to make friends. Because, you know, you look a little prettier. There's a, bu- <laughs> there's a bunch of those in there where it's like, um, I think with the detect thought spell... Uh, requires a, a copper piece because it's a penny for your thoughts. There's yeah, a bunch yeah. of these like bad dad jokes worked into it. Yeah. And I like that idea of this magic item being similar to that, of maybe working in something about adding to the friend spell as one of these abilities or to your persuasion rules, but not necessarily because it's actually magic, but just because you're just trying to turn the charm on. So you're going to put on some makeup and do your hair all up nice so that you go over <laughs> and persuade them a little better. Yeah. <laughs> While putting on makeup can perhaps lubricate social situations, it is considered. <laughs> Onag was getting a drink, and he he almost. As soon as spit. the word lubricate crossed <laughs> your lips. Um, <laughs> it is considered rude to put on makeup like while you're while talking to someone. So that doesn't help. Yeah, in the conversation. So I was wondering if you could, and then you're smearing makeup. Dude. Across, maybe let us into the party, even though we're not on the list, and you're rubbing rouge all over your face. I feel like that that's a hella power move, though. If you're in a conversation <laughs> and making an intimidation check. They're talking to you, and you just look away. Mm-hmm. Just start putting on your lipstick. Yeah, yes, that could be like a Tiefling Wars Prada power play kind of like putting on. <laughs> that's insensitive. Putting on the lipstick as you make a threat, but that's like flavor in the friend spell saying <laughs> while you cast the spell, you have to put on makeup. Yeah, while casting. While Not casting. You can't just do it before it. Yeah. yeah, you have to literally like. <laughs> Put on some you like foundation on, while you're talking like, to them. You, I can't put on mascara without opening my mouth like a freak. Oh, absolutely. How am I going to be like, hey, <laughs> can you give me a discount? <laughs> 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 that's not going to work. I mean, that's very off topic. But again, what you're talking about, the power move of putting yeah. on lipstick, that's why I like the Larkana number 23. Because the idea of like, putting on that lipstick because you're ready to throw down Mm -hmm. is a very, very good image. Yeah, I love it. Are there other makeup magic items that could possibly give you separate benefits? Oh, I did. Mm -hmm. I've actually seen one recently uh, that was 
eye makeup that gave you dark vision yeah, an advantage on perception the checks. mascara of far seeking <laughs> i think that there should be some kind of like hair tie of concentration or something where like you go Ooh, to put I love up your that. hair and then you're like ready for like or the hair tie of business like well that's like um violet in the series of unfortunate events whenever she's like getting down to business she like puts her hair up and that's how you know yeah. she's thinking you're hard. like i can't get my hair in my face right now or like when the woman puts her hair up in a bun that's like the standard lady business look Totally. And uh, so I think maybe uh, yes. something... lady business. <laughs> and, you know, I'm trying to phrase it. I, I really well. like that, though, a hair tie of concentration. I think that's cool. I think there could be a fun version of this that um, harkens to um, athletes putting on black under their eyes, the stripes. Mm. Um, like football players or baseball players sometimes will put those two stripes of black under their eyes to try and keep the sun out of their eyes, I think, is the it's idea. A, yeah, it's like a, a distraction a, tactic. Uh, no, no, it's, it's, it's too... Uh, help diffuse the sunlight coming oh, into your yeah. eyes. It doesn't actually work. I, I think no, it's... It, it like stuff like that works. Okay. <laughs> no, it's, it, the it's, amount of disbelief on Bean's face while she said okay. It's been proven to like not really work very well. Yeah, start a war in the comments. Yeah, Do you... fair <laughs> enough. Do you put on eye black before a game? Let us know, all you you know athletes listening to this podcast. Hey, D and D. I'm sure there are Diesel five. Plays D and D. There are at least two. <laughs> um, no, but that that same idea of, but it puts it uh, allows you to have a stronger like intimidation check or something because mm-hmm. you're like putting on war paint. Like, mm-hmm. I think you're gonna want to let us in here, and you're dragging it across your face and like the sigils of your tribe, and they're like, oh yeah, uh huh, sure, buddy. It's like there's a, a book series I really enjoy called the Wheel of Time series, and in it there is a race uh, um, that. When they go to war, they, they always wear these um, black veils, and when they put their veil over their face, it means they are going to kill someone. Like, they never do it without actually killing someone. And so, during a conversation in the book, when one of the characters begins pulling the veil up to their face, the other characters, Hey, whoa, no, no, it's just, it's cool, man, never mind, I, I, I didn't mean it. And I like the idea of that with this, like, face paint you just start applying to your <laughs> face while the town guard goes, okay, yeah, you can go in. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't see anything, okay? <laughs> now, if it was a face paint that you applied to your face that helped you with spells, would it be warlock paint instead of war paint? Warlock paint? Yeah. That would be only if the warlock painted their hair. Okay. Okay. Yo, you can both go that home. That was good. I, I want both of you to notice... <laughs> The distinct lack of laughter. We're a bard and a rogue. We're the ones who are the funniest. <laughs> <laughs> or at least we, we think, think so. so. <laughs> We're the ones who picked these characters to compensate for our daily lives. Oh, wow. Oh, 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 personally oh, called out. And here it goes. Uh, <laughs> let's move on is this, then. Is this the episode where, where we have... This is the party split. This is the party splits episode <laughs> yeah. because of infighting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. It was too savage. It was right there. I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't not. I mean, I I had been thinking I was like channeling was it my savage? actual humor, or was it feral? Was it all right, t- move on. All right, all right. <laughs> feral. All right. You're not helping your case, okay? <laughs> all right, let's go. Thank you for sharing that magic item with us, Mercy. That was great. Um, let's move on uh, to Onog. What have you brought us this week? So I have brought. I think we're going to go with just the one uh, D&D. I brought a subclass for the Barbarian class. I see the title you've given this. I didn't. Oh, yes. <laughs> In the file, um, Onog and the Bad Barians. <laughs> uh, and uh, it, over the past couple of episodes, I've brought what I either think to be either too powerful or too, let's just say, flavorful things. Too flavorful. Too Impossible. T- too, too much flavor of, of a wrong kind of flavor. Uh, but this time I wanted to bring something that it, it it's it's kind of hard to describe. It seems like the subclass is fighting itself a majority of the time, and it's not like a self like a like a mirror subclass where you fight yourself. No, no, it's oh. not. It it is a, it That's is not sub, the intended. Flavor. It is a subclass that as you <laughs> gain as you gain more and more abilities, they become less and less useful. Okay, uh, because because of just the way that fifth edition works with the game, so. The the subclass I want to look at right now is called Path of the Strongest. Where is this from? This is from D&D Wiki. Okay, so we won't have And as a result, I have author. no idea who has made it. Okay. Uh, it could be anyone. It could be all of us. If together. you made it, comment below. <laughs> 
We're uh, sorry for apparently the absolute work we're about to do. On this. Yeah. <laughs> so, so basically, how it starts off: Path of the Strongest, become the strongest warrior of all times. A barbarian who dedicates his life to become unrivaled. You have spent your life to master a melee, we melee weapon of your choice. This is your favorite weapon. Okay, so they're a Kensei barbarian. It, yeah, it's it's kind of got that feel of like Kensei where you just focus down on one specific kind of weapon. Okay. And that's your thing. I'm not against that as a concept. So, here's Master of Your Weapon. When you choose this subclass at third level, you get to choose a, quote, favorite weapon which can be any melee weapon with the two-handed property. You can now use it with one hand, as if you were wielding it two-handed. If, if, if it also has the versatile property, you use the damage given in parentheses even when you use it single-handedly. Okay. If you choose to wield a two-handed favorite weapon with both hands, you may make one melee attack as a bonus action. Mm. So, at 14th level... Choose another weapon to be a favorite weapon. So it uh, first off... Does this, real quick uh, clarifying question, does this mean favorite weapon as in type or one specific literal just this great axe, even other great axes I'm bad at? So that's, that's one of the issues with the way this is worded is it doesn't explicitly say if it is a single battle axe or if all battle axes are now how you're good at because it says a favorite weapon. Yeah. So this is a quote. Yeah, favorite weapon. quote favorite weapon, um, and so that's kind of the issue. First off, the second issue with this is this kind of gives you all of the benefits of being a berserker barbarian, but with no downsides. If for those who don't know, the berserker barbarian subclass has the option when they go into a rage they may frenzy, and with this they are granted a bonus action attack, but when one when a barbarian goes into a frenzied rage, they afterwards must take a level of exhaustion. Yeah. And if you take too many levels of, of exhaustion, you quickly become useless and, and then die. die. So it's it's one of those like give and takes. Like, do I want to do more damage this round or do I want to not risk taking exhaustion? With this, the Path of the Strongest, you don't even need that option. As long as you are wielding whatever your favorite weapon means you get an extra bonus attack. So this is already pretty strong. Mm -hmm. However, the next couple of abilities kind of step on it. So the next ability, starting at sixth level, which is traditionally, I believe, when barbarians don't get, they don't get more combat levels. It's more of what is called a ribbon ability, if I remember correctly, at sixth level, where it's it's not quite combat oriented, but it is another helpful ability. Like totem barbarians, depending on what totem you pick, gain the ability to travel in the wilderness faster. Yeah, things like that. So it's it's not anything explicitly in combat it's or normally focused on one of the other pillars of play. On, on one of the other pillars of play. So this one is just still focused on combat. Starting at sixth level, you gain a plus one bonus to AC when while you are wielding a separate melee weapon in each hand. When you take the attack action, you may use a bonus action to attack with the weapon you're holding with the other hand. Wait. Uh-huh. Yep. Uh, there we go. Uh -huh. <laughs> we already see it. Yeah, attack with the weapon you're holding in the other hand. You add half your ability modifier rounded down to the damage of the bonus attack. Unless that modifier is negative, you only gain this benefit if you're holding your favorite weapons. So this is the point where I think they mean that when you're holding a favorite weapon, it is a type of weapon because you don't get a second favorite weapon oh. until 14th level in this. So they're saying you could dual wield. So what this is saying great is axes? you can dual wield. You can dual wield great axes. Does that even? Except well, I mean, there's like a feat that kind of does this. Except yeah, this is basically just the dual wielder feat. You just get it at sixth level instead of picking it as a feat. But also, it's for two-handed weapons, though, which I don't think the dual mm. would be normally. Well, can apply to. what what no. the dual dual wielding feat says, if I remember correctly, is it just removes the light requirement for dual wielding things. Yeah. And normally, you can't dual wield heavy two-handed weapons because you can't hold them in one hand, anyways. Yeah. But the previous ability, the level 3 ability, allows you to wield two-handed weapons in one hand. Okay. So if you were to get that feat, you wouldn't need this ability anyways. And secondly, you can already attack as a bonus action. You, 
you don't need to dual wield something. That's the, the point of dual wielding something it's, is to give yourself that extra bonus attack. Is the benefit of this to... Tr well, but it's only... Oh, that's so frustrating. Yeah, it's very... Because <laughs> I was additionally... Gonna say, I was going to say maybe you could do it where you have like a great axe and a, a mace so that it's like one is slashing and one is bludgeoning based on, I don't know, maybe you're trying to get around a weird defense that the creature has. But you can't even have... Because if a favorite weapon is just great axes, you're... Your great mace couldn't, your great club couldn't be in the other hand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the only benefit I could see from doing it this way is that you get that extra random armor class bo boost. Because even if you wield the attacks this way, for some reason, there's a damage debuff because you're dual wielding. <sighs> it, it, it specifically says that you only get half of your ability modifier as opposed to your whole abil ability modifier which you would get if you were just holding one weapon in two hands. Yeah. So already we have taken a powerful combat ability and we've balanced it out by just not giving you another ability later on. Just by saying this is a useless, redundant ability. Yeah, it is It is completely redundant. But Ona, you're the strongest warrior of all times. All times. All times. 12 o'clock. There can be multiple. Four thirty. There can be multiple times. All I times. don't see what the issue is here. Okay, so six a.m. Moving on, it's <laughs> the mercy <lights> yeah, <laughs> Six a.m. I am the strongest at I six a.m. I am the strongest warrior of six a.m. But six thirty, no. gotta call someone else. You gotta call Jeremy. You All the other Jeremy. warriors sleep in, so yeah. I get up really. That's early. why I'm the strongest at six a.m. Okay, so here we get. Uh, it, here it takes an interesting twist. The spirit of the weapon. Beginning at 10th level, you can use your action to materialize one or two of your favorite weapons. The weapons last for 10 minutes, and they have the same properties your weapons have. Question mark. But wait, uh, why wouldn't you just... Wait for, it, wait for it, wait for it. Except they deal psychic damage. Oh. If you let go of the weapons, they disappear, but you can evoke the weapons in your hands again as a bonus action. So for some reason, there's a timing restriction on this ability, yeah. even though you can just do it again as a bonus action which you're already using to attack, so I suppose that's the, the negative. I mean, I think it means within the 10 minutes. If you let go, it poofs away, and then you can call it back. But at the end right. of the 10 minutes, it just goes away anyway, even if you're still holding it. Yeah, and it doesn't have it a it doesn't have timing yeah. restrictions on this ability. It's not once per short rest so or you, long you rest. Could just poof you it just back. keep doing it. So why is there a timing why restriction? Is there a yeah, that's fair. Additionally, <sighs> this kind of uh, this this boosts your weapons in a way because it deals psychic damage, and not a lot of things are resistant to psychic. Yeah, damage. I kind of dig, and we can get into later maybe mm -hmm. how we would go about maybe adjusting this class and talking about mm -hmm. ideas for that. I dig the idea of a barbarian wielding like psychic axes, like going into a complete different kind of archetype of barbarian where instead of doing just normal weapons they work into psychic damage yeah kind of like a psylocke thing from x-men where yeah, it's just cool. you're you're doing these weird violent psychic attacks because they manifest as yeah, these like bloodthirsty axes. weapons yeah that's well and i think that works with the flavor of barbarian yeah. like raging mm -hmm. and berserking and there's a yeah. there's a tiny nugget of something interesting there yeah. Yeah. there's a nugget there's a nugget of joy yeah. and then it's kind it kind of nerfs the weapon in another way because I mean, not that you would be throwing great axes very often, but if you are the strongest, perhaps you would throw a great axe. Of all times. Um, and because you can't throw these weapons, because the moment they leave your hands, they, they cease to exist. <laughs> Maybe that's to prevent you from machine gunning them. From throwing them and materializing another one. I mean, and, Like and every single turn, just chucking a hundred like, axes. Like hell Which, up. now that I'm thinking of... That is also a very cool subclass that I'd love to, to see. Yeah. <laughs> Barbarians that have an infinite supply of axes and all they just, do is throw them. Just infinite javelins, just boom, yeah. boom, 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 boom. It's just yeah. a ranged barbarian. Well, but yeah, like you had said, like Helen Thor Ragnarok, where she just throws swords. Her power is just knives? Her power is sword. <laughs> I am the god of sword. Not the god of swordsmanship. Well, as we, as we learn in that movie... Is Thor the god of hammers? Exactly, that's fair. Mm. I am the god If he of was, he would be able to... Sword. <laughs> <laughs> if Thor was the god of hammers, he'd be able to shoot hammers from his hands, which I'd love to see if we need to make that a subclass, is what I'm trying to say here. All right. So, then we get into the last ability, Brute Force of the Strongest. At 14th level, you have become so strong that you count as one size larger when determining the weight you can carry push, drag, or lift. In addition, once on each of your turns, you can double your strength modifier for an attack roll. At the damage roll of an attack you make that uses strength. You can choose to use this feature before or after the roll, but before any of the effects of the roll are applied. 
Once per turn. Yeah, once per turn, and there's no limit. And that's... It just means every time you attack. That's a basically. lot. Well, but you can attack as bonus action, so you can't do it on the second attack. Yeah, but yeah that's you can't do it on the lot. second or third attacks that you get. Well, then, but then you would just say on your main attack, yeah. you just have double strength yeah. modifier. It's weird. Because there would be no reason well, you for get, you not to do that. Well, because like the way it says, like you can see what you rolled before you choose to do that. So if you rolled really well, you'll save it for the, 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 the less action. accurate rolls. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's, it's, it's not for yeah, damage, it's for accuracy, which yes. I kind of like about that, where it's just like, you are so yeah. strong, you, you got them. I do have an issue with the previous ability in this, though. At 14th level, you basically double your carrying capacity as though you were large. This is already an ability other barbarians get. The totem bear barbarians get at sixth level. So this is kind of, once again, it's this cool idea with this other thing that kind of piddles on it. It's also a weird, like, it's called the path of the strongest. And I get that the, the flavor of it is that you're so strong you can wield these big weapons in one hand. But other than that, the flavor is severely lacking, except we're here where it just says you're so swole that you are, like, one size larger. But before that, it never mentioned anything about, like, and now your muscles are so big that, like, you can't bend down anymore, or you get bonus on intimidation checks. It just, it almost seems more of, like, you're just trained better. But then it suddenly goes, and and this was all about being literally the strongest yeah. muscle. Well, I mean, holding great axes in one hand. No, and I, I, I get that, but it's like, it sort of comes out of nowhere as, this is what you should have been doing the whole time. Is being like your muscles have gotten so big you can no longer bend your elbows. You like, stand in the T pose you must all the stand time. In the T pose and like progressed from there as opposed to being just about great weapons and then finally oh and also now you're so strong you you're, yeah. you can carry double weight. And yeah, and that's one of the things I think like we could get some interesting ideas with this, um, by by moving some things around, eliminating superfluous abilities mm -hmm. i think i think it could be very very interesting a thing like instead of is shifting it from instead of i can do a wield great axes because even even the most power hungry of barbarians which i am that's ridiculous that's that's kind of weird why would i don't want that but maybe that is hella anime though that is there's <laughs> very giant anime. It's like monster but hunter. i will one up you some anime-ness what if we changed it so that you are so skilled and so strong, you can wield weapons designed for creatures larger than you. Ultra weapons. Yeah, you could. You could. Great weapons. You, you, you could take a, a hill giant's soul. club. Oh. You could take a hill giant's club, and it might not do as much damage in your hands because you are not a huge creature. But maybe you can swing that sucker around and get get some extra damage output for that. I'd be so into that. I think that would be. If this was more built around that concept of you are just so big that you get new and interesting things instead of, I guess, just like you can hold two great axes. And then double it, up on those weird mechanics. If it started off at like third level with that, like you're so large, you double your carrying weight because you have trained your whole life to be mm. the most buff. And then it starts giving you abilities like you can hold like giants clubs. You can like slam the ground to do a Hulk ground pound attack that like causes an earthquake or yeah, something. something. Focuses into that actual idea of you being raw physically strong instead of like really being stuck on this just you can hold two great weapons. That's what strong means. Nothing else. Yeah. Like, it like weirdly narrowed itself into that idea. Mm -hmm. I think there are some things I have wanted to play with. Um, you know, if your muscles are literally that big, I've always wanted to play with the idea of, like, passive intimidation. Mm. I know that this isn't a thing that's listed here at all, but I'm also imagining that you would pump all of your, you know, stats into your strength and you would be left with no charisma. And so if you, if there was just something about how big your muscles were that you just had a passive intimidation all the time... That could either be good or bad for your yeah. character, and that could be a fun thing. I think another thing, and it would probably not be the best to deal with, but if you're so strong that when you handle normal objects, the DM a little bit like wild sorcery magic Ooh. could randomly ask for you to roll and see if you accidentally just crush the object. You go to pick up a cup at the tavern and it just shatters in mm -hmm. your hand. Like you have, you're like, I have a very, Another. I have a very special like stone cup that I bring with me everywhere because it's the only one that I can't break. That I won't ask just... 
shatter to dust in my hand. I ask the wizard to cast Mage Hand to like hold things for me so I don't shatter them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that that could be a good debuff to kind of balance some overpoweredness if you want to go that way. That's also just really fun. On on your note of saying you pump everything into strength and then you have no charisma left and it doesn't feel right that you can't intimidate people well, I think that's its own entire discussion, but I think Mm -hmm. it's worth touching on here that I, I think not often enough are both players and dms thinking creatively enough where Mm -hmm. it's like i am so strong you can make a strength based intimidation check or you like flex at him or maybe you say i want to like look at him and see if i can pick out something he's probably insecure about and then like target that make a wisdom based Mm -hmm. intimidation check and like not often do players or dms i think think outside the box in that way it doesn't have to be charisma based but I, i like your idea of of giving them a buff. Well, there. I totally know what you're talking about because I have done this as a player because I've been like, ooh, I don't have charisma, so I shouldn't try to persuade them. But I've also had moments where I'm like, I pick him up off the ground and hold a knife to his throat and I say, like, tell us or I'll kill you. And then they're like, make an intimidation check. And I'm like, but I'm picking him up. Like, yeah. I, like and then I yeah. roll poorly and they're like, oh, he's not intimidated by you. I'm like, what do you mean? I have a knife in his eye. <laughs> I, that should be strength based or yeah, something. And maybe, yeah, and maybe the I'm guy the should... strongest warrior of all time. I have two great axes. <laughs> <laughs> like, I use my great axes like chopsticks and I just pick this man up off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I flip my great axes around and I use them as chopsticks for eating most of the time. Killing people 10 feet behind me. <laughs> That's they come amazing. to, like, really fine yeah. points at the end so that you can pick up delicate objects with them. <laughs> I think that this overall has, like, a couple of interesting ideas. Overall, though, I really think it is, it's pretty lackluster. You end yeah. up feeling like this doesn't, it doesn't give you enough to feel worth it. And it doesn't have the kind of synergy you hope from in a subclass to be a very mm-hmm. strong, um, like, flavorful single idea. And I think we've talked about a few different ways that you could look at this, like, actually building it into your raw physical strength and how that affects the world around you. Mm -hmm. I really like the idea of like a mage slayer barbarian who uses psychic damage and like, yeah, like conjures psychic weapons from the air um, to be better at fighting in a non-physical way. Yeah, that's Mm -hmm. right. I think that's very cool. Um, There's like little bits and pieces that could be their own interesting subclass, but overall, eh. Yeah. Nothing. It kind of went... Went, went both too far in one direction and in too many directions at once. Yeah, definitely. I think, too, like, I'm not trying to hate on it too much because I don't mind the idea, but yeah. the premise of, like, the path of the strongest, I think part of the problem is that that's just a very single-minded idea of, like, you're just very, 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 very strong. Yeah. Like that. You're already a barbarian. Yeah. That's what you decided no, to do. If you were to play into that fully and say, like, you were literally born with, like, a genetic mutation or, like, a god blessed you. Like, something happened to mm. you. With, like, like Hercules style. You have yeah. unknowable physical strength. Yeah, that, like, and it literally could manifest in, like, <sighs> bodybuilder kinds of ways. Or, or there that is, even you don't understand. Yeah, there is something about you that, like, has given you just some crazy amounts of strength. And then if it is genetic or some kind of from on high blessing that's also usually genetic by the way in the case of zeus fair enough but that could be like a cool thing like maybe maybe you are like a demigod like you are descended from Mm -hmm. gods and so that could be or a race of ancient heroes yeah that's a cool thing to to play off of that you get other kinds of things from that too i really like the idea that it, it could still be path of the strongest but it instead of focusing on your actual physical appearance you could be any size or shape but you are still unknowably strong in that sort of superhero way where you're a a a young child you're like a maybe like a teenager or or younger and you are stronger than like the trained warriors around you by sheer accident Mm -hmm. you're like lifting up carts with one hand baby superman style and they're like oh my goodness what what happened to this child how are they this strong Mm -hmm. and maybe it could i think it'd be interesting you could either tie it in with like a holy blessing from a god or something like that i think it'd be cool to tie it into maybe you have like the blood of giants in you something like or that. yeah like like if if we want to go that way too we could we could even reflavor it instead of path of strongest uh, of the strongest it could be like path of the titan yeah. or something where it's like it's something in your blood that makes you strong yeah 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 definitely because i mean you if if we want to go giants in your blood we already have something 
for that. There are giants called... in my blood. Oh, gosh. Hey, who's the bard here? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're fired. Um, but we, are, we already have goliaths. Yeah. We already have people who right. are part giant, part giant, you know, kind of a thing. Yeah. Uh, but that being said, you also don't want to make a barbarian path that doesn't synergize with being a goliath. Like, yeah. Because like mostly, like this kind of does. You kind of want to be a barbarian. I you mean, can always free yourself up to do other things, but a lot of people who choose Goliath are going for that because that's why they picked that race to start with. They yeah. want to be a large, strong person. And a, so, in the a ki- big chunky boy, a big chunky oh, boy, as back. one does. <laughs> um, but buy our t-shirts. This we don't have. We don't have t-shirts. There are no t-shirts. But if, if we create, make t-shirts and give them to us create, so you can buy them, if we create a demand, <laughs> someone else make t-shirts and just cut us in on the on the money. <laughs> <laughs> but so this the the path of the strongest the fourteenth level ability is a non bow, uh, non combo for uh, for those noobs well, out for there. The uninitiated. Oh my god, uh, <laughs> um, But it, it it doesn't it doesn't synergize well with a Goliath's natural athletic build mm-hmm. because they have the same ability. And so for at a fourteenth level to then give them the same ability that doesn't make them bigger. Unless it stacks. Well, th- and that's the thing. That's why you have to be careful about wording. You got to watch out that, because you're it a Goliath says, who can lift the weight of uh, what's above large. Oh, no, no. Goliaths can already do that. If you make a totem bear barbarian that is a Goliath, Goliath's uh, powerful build ability says they may lift, pull, and push as though they were one size larger. Mm-hmm. Now, that in the rules means that you may lift, pull, and push at twice your uh, twice your strength uh, number, basically, uh, than you would normally be able to do. However, the Totem Bear Barbarian ability at 6th level says you may push, pull, and lift as the, uh, not as though you were a size larger. It just says twice the normal amount you could, which is the same effect, but because it doesn't care about how big you are yeah it allows you to stack on that however the way it's worded in path of the strongest it says it wouldn't stack it wouldn't stack because it says as though you were one size size larger and goliaths already get that so it's uh goliath wouldn't want to be the strongest because they already are as strong as that would make them yeah kind of a thing. i think that has more to do with wording than intention well yeah. And that's the thing, you have to be careful about where yeah, because... wording is important in, in Dungeons and Dragons. I mean, it's all you have to work with. The book is totally. the rules, right? Like, it's the wording and picking it apart is mm-hmm. important for certain mm-hmm. things. D&D is just a semantic holy war. It yeah, is. That's, it really that's, is. That's what it finally is. But you, you have to be careful when making a subclass because yeah. you don't want... You, 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 you want the strongest goliaths you don't want them to go but why would i be that yeah. you know you should definitely um this is just a little tip for the listeners at home if you are working on a homebrew making something every time i read a homebrew that is worded in different ways than i know uh wizards of the coast would have worded it it bothers me yeah yeah and it, it should because it creates problems like this where you don't know exactly what they might have meant so I would recommend highly studying out the specific types of wording. And if you know there's an ability already that's very close, just copy that ability Go word for it, word yeah. and then adjust it to what you're doing so that you're wording it the same. Because that consistency in wording, instead of saying like, and also once on your turn, do this, you can do it as a bonus action. Compared to once on your turn as a bonus action, you can. Like, even though that doesn't seem important, sometimes more, it is important. And it's it much more up. streamlined. And- just remember, there's nothing wrong with just playing off of things that exist. Like last time when we talked about the Cloak of the Rat, yep. it just said, you're under the effect of this spell. Like, it yeah, is exactly. as if you have this spell. You didn't have to rewrite the whole thing. And I appreciated it because we know what that spell does, so there's not a lot of debate where you're like, wait a minute, isn't this just the same as this spell? Like, yeah. it's not that you're going to seem less creative. It, in fact, will make it easier to use your homebrew. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. Still from the best. Give them credit. And so, yeah, let's move on to what Bean has brought us. Thanks so much, Arnold. That was good. Um, Look, I think that was a good example of something that kind of under, or comes in a little bit under what you'd hope it would be, but has potential for being yeah. refined in the future. Definitely. Okay, so I have brought a race today, and I want to try to do something a little it's bit... like a 5K? 
You know, no one has made that joke yet. No one has. Yeah, no, no one got there. No one definitely wonder, didn't make I'm, that joke already before the, the mic was recording. I'm planting my flag on that now. I, I claim it. Got it. I, <laughs> do, is that what you want? Do you want to claim that? Oh, is that, that is this the hill you want to die to, on? Okay. I will. Like, I kind of made the luge joke, but it didn't land. Exactly. Anyway, so why did you think it would land version. the second time? Oh, that landed so hard. People at home are loving this. <laughs> no one's listening to this in their home. <laughs> <laughs> I want to try to introduce this a slightly different way than we normally would. So I'm going to tell you what the race is. So don't look at the thing. Yeah, don't read it. Okay, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. Not Put a it down, deal. Onog. Not a huge nope. deal if you have. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I just want to talk about it just very, very generally what we would guess if we were making it would be the kinds of things this race would have. Okay. Mm-hmm. This is the player race of penguin. <laughs> penguin player race. <laughs> not an Aarakocra. Not, not like, like penguin humanoid yeah, creatures. Yeah, I have, cause I have seen penguin Aarakocras and pen- penguin kankus. And those are both really cool. Penguins. Penguins. <laughs> Let's get Benedict Cumber. Cumberbatch. No, it's it's it's, it's, it's Benedict Cumberbatch. Cumberbatch. <laughs> Let's get Benedict Cumberbatch in here to try to say all of these words. Yes. Aracocra. Penguacocra. 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 Um, I love how I was making fun of him for not being able to pronounce things, and I couldn't say his Thomas name. Thomas looked a little upset with himself. No, that is that is how the universe balances. That's fair. Anyway. Okay, so, Penguin Player Race. Penguin First immediate players. reaction, your um, your appendages have to be um, upbeat and positive. No. <laughs> no, we're not doing this. Specifically, <laughs> specifically your, your legs. Lower half, yeah. yeah. Somewhere probably going down to where your shoes might be. <laughs> uh-huh. Let's move on. Yeah. No, no one can see, but I am furiously glaring at Everyone in this room. You're sharpening your axe. <laughs> help. Send help, I'm please. sharpening both of my great axes. Oh, Bobby, You're the strongest of all times. <laughs> so, okay. besides having lively... Positive appendages. Positive appendages. That's uh-huh. a feature of this race. Or positive appendages, too, perhaps. <laughs> um, I think, I think beautiful uh, lifelong partnerships... That's fair. Oh, actually, yeah. no, that, that's reasonable. Okay, and that, yeah. but that to be, actually bring it back on That could be <laughs> expanded into, like, you form friendships very easily. You oh. know, like, maybe you're just, like, a very I think personal. penguins are deaf high charisma. Yeah. I think, well, I would think, just on their well, physicality. Well, they wear tuxedos all the time. They wear tuxedos yeah. all the time, so very fair. Um, they would definitely be a small race. I agree. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Fitting in with... You just no, keep with the a, same size... With the natural is. swim speed, I would think. Yeah, because they're not going to be giant no. penguins. These are just regular this is penguins a penguin with a sword on its back. That can talk. Okay. Totally swim speed, I 100% speed. agree. Are there any other... Like, what are their ability traits? Talk with animals? I don't... Well, I don't think they get dark... Vi- do they have dark vision? Do I birds... Don't. Some no, birds, penguins, like owls would, Penguins would swim, think. like, deep in the ocean and under that ice. That is true. Fair. They see under, like, dark water. Mm-hmm. And in the Maybe. Antarctic, it's, like, dark half the year. Yeah. That's fair. They That's would. Fair. They probably do. So, yeah. but, but during that time, they're also all huddling and staying still. So... I would think that definitely charisma because of their, mm-hmm. their they are all snappy dressers always. Yeah. But also I would think constitution to kind of endure oh, yeah. the can, elements. Yeah, penguins can take a beating. I think so. Uh, Which is a fun I was thinking more of with the elements, but I'm sure they could also no, take I meant a beating. No, beating from the elements. <laughs> <laughs> but that's also a fun idea of a small creature that gets a strong boost to its constitution, but not because it's necessarily like tough. Like um like a stout halfling. Yeah. But because it's like blubbery. Yeah. <laughs> so you go to punch it and he's just like just very very kung fu panda. Bounces right off. I'm of so him. excited that you said that. Oh yeah? Mm-hmm. Oh, Do we no. have a blubber ability? I would get into it. Oh my goodness. Yeah, we're getting um, there. And it's, then yeah. I mean I can't say anything else. I think I think they would have a natural um like peck attack that could deal piercing. Yeah, damage, like you perhaps. know, like tabaxi have claws, yeah. penguins have beaks. The science is in. For a long time, people thought penguins couldn't see in the dark because they stay out of the water at night. But that's because it's harder to not get eaten by a leopard seal in the water at night. And currently, scientists think that they can see in the dark. Mm. Nice. So, there you go. There you so, go. I will throw dark it. vision, uh, three hundred feet. 
Okay, yeah. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> they can also see through ice. They can see, they have true sight. I think penguins have true sight. Yeah, for sure. They can, In some degree, yes. They can also swallow you. Uh-huh. Even though they are small creatures. But yes, they have a swallow. They, they are slighty boys. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I think they, they should like definitely a... have magical resistance, as we've discussed before. If we have, as as you 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 might not understand what we're talking about, tune into our side quests where we create you a said, dryad race. You said it wrong. What? You didn't do it again. What did I do? You, you didn't say side quest. Oh gosh, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we introduced those. I'm excited to hear That's how these. one of us. Yeah, you were on those. the main quest last time. All three of us did a side quest together. Yeah. How did that go, by the way? The main quest yeah. without oh, us. Oh, it's been going very great. I handled it very well all Good. on my own. Good. I'm proud of you. Um, I know what you're talking about. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. <laughs> okay, let's, what, what, what um, did we bring here? Yeah, so I actually have I think we've put brought, together a solid one. Yeah, so. I have brought two... Lots of people have contributed to the idea of playable penguins. It's a huge market. Playable we, penguins there's a big need. is also the name of my ska band. <laughs> Fair enough. We're starting a ska band now? Yeah, okay. we have a lot. Anyway, so I have actually brought two penguin races that both oh. take a very different look at penguins, but I oh. like some of the abilities that they both offer, and I wonder if there's a way oh. that we can talk about them. Both of these are from D&D Beyond. The first one is by Basile Brush. Basil Brush. Um, so I love the little intro for this. Penguins are known to live happy lives, in their communities where they eat fish all day. Most penguins like to seek adventure, find treasure, explore new places, and mainly get up to mischief. Though penguins tend to do things they aren't supposed to, they are kind at heart and are friendly to all those around them, most of the time. Everyone loves penguins, however, so they get away with almost everything they do. I added almost everything because they say they get away with everything they That's do. That's a racial ability. I, I they get to, away with everything they I do. I have to say, Bean, you sounded just like the voiceover at like a sea world kind of park about the penguins. That's what I was going for. Okay. <laughs> when um, you were reading that. You so, needed, I'll add some reverb in post. So it sounds yeah. like you're talking through one of those hip microphone belts. Yes. <laughs> penguins <laughs> do have knees. Stop asking us about that. <laughs> I have asked, uh, at the aquarium, I have asked them, do penguins have knees twice? <laughs> well, because I love the answer. For the record, penguins do have knees. Yes, they're just high They're up. just inside them, but they're like squatting all the time. Yeah. Anyway, I could go on about that. So, so another ability, penguins got that booty. Though. Yes. <laughs> got massive cats. Constantly um, doing squats. So, uh, ability score increase. So, your constitution score increases by two. This Aha! Is, so we got there. Yeah, we, we got eventually there. eventually got there. Um, I actually really like this. The penguin reaches no. adulthood at five and lives until the age of 20. I saw this and it made me so sad. They don't live for very long. You're, you're going to have so many penguins in the party who, like, like die of old age <laughs> like he started adventuring when he was like 15 uh-huh. and over the like five years you've been together he's become an old man and you've just only become more in your prime and you all have to like go to his penguin funeral <laughs> no. can't deal with this <laughs> um so i will say in the other one although i guess that's just how he- elves feel about humans yeah, yeah. it's the yeah. same thing yeah, emperor penguins live for 20 years. Little penguins only live for six. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Guys, animals have different lifespans. This is a thing. Everything lives forever. Don't ruin this for me. No one ever dies. Okay. <laughs> my, my dog went to live on a beautiful farm upstate. And has been living there for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> I was the one that found that my dog dead, so my parents couldn't pull that on me. Oh, no. Um... Hey guys, let's all talk about when our animals do. Let's not. <laughs> Moving on. Anyway. The alignment of penguins. Um, so They're I will say, okay, overall, no. I like the flavor, the like cultural flavor of this one, and I like some of the abilities on the other yeah. one. Okay. So um, alignment, most penguins are chaotic good. You know, I don't really do alignments. Yeah. They're good hearted. They like to help others. They, you know, they're fun. Except for those evil penguins. You Except for have... when you when you play like a fallen paladin penguin who's like <laughs> like going to murder innocent nice. What's black? <laughs> he's covered in black spike armor and he's just like the souls of the innocent aren't worth saving. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, holy cow, this penguin. What's black and white? And, and black all over. <laughs> oh, My I thought you were gonna say, you were say <laughs> what's black and white and red all over. Me, covered in your blood. <laughs> <laughs> kills you. See, I subverted it by just saying you. black. Anyway, yeah. um, 
Now, this is true in both of them. Penguins only have a movement speed of 25 because they waddle. Yeah, they're scared. So they can't really go. Unless, I like I would that. Like That's to, appropriate. I would like to propose if they travel on their belly, they go up to 35. So yes. I actually, <laughs> so that is a thing. They don't talk about sliding in this one, but in the other one, they do okay, talk okay, about Okay, okay, okay. So we'll get that's kind of where I so, went. Yeah. Languages. Uh, they can speak and write in common. And I like that they have them speak penguin. Penguin is now its own language. Penguin is its own language, and they speak in squat. Do Aarakocras speak Aarakocra, or do they speak like Avon? Yes, they speak Aarakocran and um, Oren. Yeah, in some of the other ones, I have seen them speaking Oren, Aarakocran, or even Aquan. Mm. Um, so Ooh, this would be cool. that's up for cool. debate there. Yeah. I do like the idea that penguin is its own language. That's fair, that's fair. I think it's very cute. Uh, no one can understand the language apart from penguins themselves. Dark vision, they do have dark vision. Penguins have cold resistance. Okay, fair They're enough. used to freezing fair weather enough. conditions. They are resistant to cold damage. Natural swimmer, they have a movement speed of 30 feet in the water. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> extraordinary cuteness. <laughs> Penguins are so cute and fluffy, and everyone can't help but agree with them. You are proficient in persuasion. I like the idea of that. Um, I mean, it's a bit of a trope in, in some cartoons of the hyper cute character that even when they say horrible things, everyone goes, I can't disagree. With it's like, like cat hug. We should murder the innocent. And they're like, yeah, we should. You're so adorable. Yeah. It's like when Catbug like murders that little alien boy and they're like, oh, he didn't mean to, did he? And they're like, no, he did. He like went he out of his way to plot that and man's murder. And he murder. loved it. <laughs> but he's like, oh, whoops. And they're like, oh, we forgive you. <laughs> now I knew Rebecca. Um, so sharp beak. Penguins love and adore their beaks, and they are a handy tool. Mm-hmm. You can attack with a 1d4 plus dexterity or strength modifier. We got that. That yeah. was perfect. You guys did really good. Okay, there are two variants of penguins. Subclasses. Oh, no. Sub- Subraces. Subraces. Chubby penguin. <gasps> Chubby penguins are tough and strong. They're usually the protectors of other penguin communities, and they're the strongest of all time. No, the strongest <laughs> of them all. They are... <gasps> now we need to make a chubby penguin strongest barbarian. <laughs> So, in addition to constitution, your strength score increases by two. A chubby penguin with two great axes. <laughs> it's flippers it just He's curl. just spinning like a motor, just <laughs> covered in, like, like, bits and pieces of his enemies. And then he's like, oops. And you're like, ah, oh, we can't do that. Because <laughs> they can get away with everything. They get away with everything. This is canon. Um... Size. It's anarchy in their society. Chubby penguins are between four and five feet tall and average one fifty pounds. Your size is medium. Ooh, so they're they're bigger boys. Much bigger, yeah. Flabby flabby body. Chubby penguins are so chubby. Weapons sometimes bounce right <laughs> off of them. You're resistant to bludgeoning damage. Like so it's just Ooh, boing. resistant that's to bludgeoning damage. Just raw bludgeoning damage. Damn. That's powerful. Yeah. So yes. I don't know if the the talk about that, but I like the idea that what you said earlier, like so kung fu flabby, panda. Yeah. Now, of course, you can pierce that, but the idea that like if you punch them it just kind of and if you pierce it it does like like a balloon just like and then they fly around the room as they shrink because they're just inflated with helium i think if you needed to nerf that for balance you could make that be an ability as a reaction like getting hit with with a bludgeoning attack you can like every you know short rest or something kind of similar to make it bounce back yeah kind of similar to the goliath uh, stone's endurance ability yeah. where they can resist yeah. certain damages as a reaction once yeah. per but the penguin right? just yeah. does it by pulling all of its limbs into it's, its like whoop. flubby body and it's just pure it's just a black and white fat. beach ball just whoop, like yeah. a sphere. yeah it yeah. would work better as a reaction um, so I think it is a little OP but yeah. yes the idea of that it is so chubby it can handle damage then there's the slippery penguin slippery penguins are the most mischievous penguins of them all they're hard oh sorry <clears throat> Slippery penguins are the most mischievous penguins of them all. They're hard to catch and find as they are small and quick. Uh, so your dexterity score increases by one, which I think is interesting because chubby penguins get a stat increase of two. So I don't know why this one only it's one. only by one. Yeah, but that's especially, just a, yeah. Hmm. That's just a personal preference thing, I guess. Um, size, slippery penguins are three feet and 40 pounds. Your size is small, naturally stealthy. You can hide behind like if you're obscured by a bigger creature that's one size at least one size larger then you can hide behind them yep. other small creatures, creatures have the same kind of thing Sli- super slippery opportunity attacks cannot be made against you okay it's a little much but oh, you're just maybe so that's slippery. why they only get a plus one maybe mm. and then 
it's interesting to me that they have another ability, like, they have so many more abilities than the chubby penguin, because they also have tough feathers. Your feathers are tough enough, so you don't need to wear armor. Your natural armor, you have a natural armor of 12 plus your dexterity modifier. But a penguin wearing armor is so cute. Why I want them to want wear to armor. So, I don't know why, because some... Yeah, this seems like a, kind of a... Yeah, it, it it kind of seems a little tacked on there, especially for yeah. the stealthy penguins, yeah. like giving them extra armor. Yeah. Well, that it, sounds to me like like whoever made this thought it was cuter to have a penguin not wearing armor, so they just put it on fair so enough. they wouldn't have fair to, enough. you know. Well, or slash, like, you know that if they're going to be, a, like, a rogue or whatever, if you are going to be stealthy, wearing armor is loud. Okay. Not so, yeah. like, leather armor, Well, though. fair, but, yeah. but yeah. they just might have been trying to compensate. There is one comment on here, and the only comment is, shouldn't tough feathers be a chubby penguin feature? So already there are people Maybe in the community. it might have even just been a, a mistake where tough feathers was supposed to be. Because mm-hmm. uh-huh. tough... there's, there's only one chubby penguin ability, whereas there's three slipper things. Yeah. So they might have meant it to be two mm-hmm. and two. And tough feathers could just maybe be a thing that all penguins have. You yeah. know, like, anyway, it is very interesting. Um, yeah. So there are a few things that I think could be pulled back on, Definitely. but overall I really like it. Now if we go to the other penguin race, it's fun and I really like a lot of the decisions they made here. Some of them are very different and they went for a slightly different cultural look at penguins and I guess mm-hmm. you could choose whichever one you want. But penguin traits, uh, your common penguin may seem harmless, fluffy, and even a bit cute. But you should never underestimate underestimate the abilities of these Arctic warriors. So this is more like a group of warriors that like like the water tribe that like live together. They're not just penguins that can talk. This is like sentient penguins with a society. Um, ability score. So this one they have their stat increased by two, and your wisdom increases by one. Dexterity two and wisdom one. Which mm. I can see because penguins are slippery and sure. they're acrobatic. And maybe it's like because they hunt, so they yeah. have like that sort of predatory nature. Their wisdom would go up by one. Um, this one they say that penguins reach adulthood if, at fifteen, and they live for an average of fifty years. So, so this seems, yeah, this seems to be more of a. A, a fantasy penguin that is like almost yeah. a humanoid penguin. Yeah. Not yeah. humanoid meaning looking humanoid, but like they would be intelligent and speak with you. Yeah, they live in a society. They have a culture. Yeah. It almost makes me think of Narnia where you have dumb animals yeah. and mm-hmm. like what was what are they what talking about the word they use yeah. for the like awakened ones. But yeah, yeah where they're not the same yeah. as a regular penguin. Because there's yeah, the like there's beavers that can't talk, but then like there's the beavers that they meet who like have a house and they yeah. make tea. And it, and it would make sense to me that they would live longer like a human. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, you could take that whatever you want, direction-wise. Um, alignment, uh, penguins lead orderly, ritualistic lives. They have customs and routine, uh, becoming more set in their ways. More strict. Most are good. A few can be selfish. Um, it's unusual for a penguin to shuck off order in favor of chaos. So that's interesting because... The other one was chaotic. Now, I could see both, though, because penguins are very playful, but they also... You know, they'll do their little circles of staying warm, and there's mm-hmm. like, you have there to There are rules the you have to follow there's, to survive. I mean, emperors. They have a developed they have society. A, uh, yeah, okay. the government. Go home. <laughs> I anyway. am home. I live here. You all came to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they are small, but they are fluffy. Your walking speed is 25. I don't like this. Your base swimming speed is locked at 10 feet. Huh. That's an that, interesting that thing. Doesn't make any sense to me. That that so that implies that even if something else were to give you a swimming speed, you it, wouldn't be able yeah. to go faster than ten feet. That's I'll, weird wording. I'll tell you guys, we had just talked about you shouldn't branch out too much from the wording already used in D anD. d Yeah, nothing locks anything. No. D anD. d ability wordings that would create so many semantic problems with other yeah, abilities. Definitely. That's weird. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, this other penguin is written by Friendly Guy. Oh, okay. Well, oh, hi. I can't feel too bad at it. But well, I mean, dang it. Friendly Guy, come on. He's he's just a friendly guy. Yeah. Um, it also says, continuing the slide action into a liquid lets you keep traveling until you reach the full length of the slide. We'll get into that later. Oh, mm-hmm. interesting. In this one, you can write in common as well as Auron. So this one, the penguin's not its own. Now, language, yeah. this, I really like this ability, hold breath. You can hold your breath up to 20 minutes at a time. That I totally makes sense to me. Yeah. I like that ability. Um, it goes on to say, penguins aren't natural swimmers, which I don't know if he has seen 
penguins shoot out of the water at 100 miles an hour. Yeah, or like... Penguins can go fast. Yeah, dude, penguins are great swimmers. Yeah, they're so, very good swimmers. Um, I don't know what he's talking about there, but I like the idea that they can hold their breath for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Penguin slide. Your slipperiness and agility allow you to slide with a burst of speed. When you move 10 feet or more in one direction on your turn in combat, you can take a slide action as a bonus action. A slide action is identical to a dash action, but you don't provoke opportunity attacks, and you can only travel five feet laterally after every ten feet traveled forwards with the movement gained from the slide action if you wish to travel laterally. All right, folks. Laterally? Oof. All right, folks. Uh, if you're going <laughs> to... If you're gonna move away from the wording in the DMG in the player's handbook, you're gonna create some problems. Oh man! Let me just be clear. I think what they mean is if you're gonna turn. Uh, they're, they're saying yeah. you can't turn, but that is such a. You're gonna need more paragraphs than that, and yeah. uh, that's. And sure, you can't say I slide in a zigzag. Like maybe you say yeah. I. You just, just say in a single direction. You should say yeah. in a straight line. In yeah. a straight line. You should just say slide gives you a straight line of movement. Mm-hmm. That's how the the player's handbook would or handle. Or slide and you can only turn once. And it doesn't restrict your direction. You can turn one time. Yeah. No more than 90 degrees. Anyway, yeah, yeah, but yeah. fair enough, fair enough. You get to basically during combat slide away. And I don't necessarily mind that it doesn't provoke an opportunity attack because you like lay down. And you like shoot between their legs. Yeah, you can out of there. Yep. Um, penguin training. You're proficient in oh. uh, some of the following skills. Two of the following skills: acrobatics, persuasion, stealth, and sleight of hand. So this just gives you a little bit more. That's interesting. In choice. our in our recent side quest, we designed a, a race, and we actually had a similar idea of having a proficiency option as one of the uh, yeah. race abilities. So then the final thing here is sled. The movement granted by the slide action is not impacted by difficult terrain, such as ice, snow, water, etc., if the penguin succeeds on a DC-15 acrobatics check. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, fair enough. I do like what you said earlier, Tom, about... Or Thomas. Sorry. Yeah, don't call me Tom. <laughs> Come on. Thomas. Tom was his wow. father. Tom was my nephew. I don't know. Okay. Uh, no, it's not. Um, but it's not you talked name. about that if they're walking... They're slower, and then you said that if they slide and push on their bellies, that they should be able to go a little bit faster. Yeah. I like that ability, and I think that the slide ability here kind of touches on that. Yeah. I think it should just be five feet faster, though. Mm-hmm. Um, like, it's not just a dash. It's, it's not. It's an improved it's, speed. It's just an improved speed. My question is, though, like, if you were in combat and you said, I fall on my feet, you know, I fall on my stomach and I use my feet to push myself, would you then have to stand back up? Oh, yeah, are you are you, oh. are you knocking yourself? I think prone? there would be an interesting. Well, I think the hard part is that I don't know how sliding would work if you're like we're in mud. It's like I don't, I don't think you can the, belly the slide. The road is made of gravel. The road is made of tough gravel. See, I would if have I, fun if I were making a penguin uh, race, I would just give them that ability almost everywhere and not worry about it and not much. worry about yeah. it unless it's could. fun unless yeah. it's crazy difficult terrain that's fair. like if it's yeah you could probably say unless it's difficult terrain i think that would be yeah. fair though now you could say if it's difficult terrain from water snow or ice it doesn't apply well, yeah. i i just think that they should be unaffected by the, like water snow and ice are not difficult terrain to them whatever yeah, the correct wording of that general. is i yeah. i just think at all but I that think, should not be difficult terrain for a penguin but i think instead of saying that this is like an ability that they use to to boost i think it should just be an alternate mode of movement to say mm-hmm. while prone mm-hmm. you have a movement speed of like 35 instead of 20 yes oh but then it's it's a give and take cuz you're you are prone so you have to stand up and you will have to stand up and you get all the side effects of being prone so people might have advantage or disadvantage based on melee arranged attacks. But that would be that's 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 a very neat way to play with the rules as written in the game. Exactly. Which is just kind of be maybe this penguin race like to be prone and they can they can use the advantages of that maybe every they now and again. Rather be prone in combat than upright. And they'll take the disadvantages against melee attacks because maybe that's how they move around better and uh, mm. that's that's very similar to the turtle race. Ooh. Which was introduced, I believe, originally in uh, DM's uh, DM's Guild, but was later produ- uh, put in Tomb of Annihilation, I think, where they have an ability to retract into their shells and just kind of double down on defense that way. Yeah. And this this could be a neat idea of just penguins just like to be sliding around on their bellies. Yeah. 
Well, and you could even say, if they are prone, then that way they can't just say, oh, I slide everywhere and then attack someone. Because if they slide up to someone and then have to stand up, they can't actually go as far. Mm -hmm. Then with I the mean, you, you can attack while prone, right? Yeah. You can, but you would have disadvantage. Exactly. So, like, that's the thing is maybe to them it's worth it to gain this movement ability mm -hmm. and they'll take the disadvantage yeah. on their attacks. And then I like the idea, though, that you can slide away mm -hmm. as a dash and you would just phrase it as, like, if you dash while sliding while prone yeah. while prone then you do not get an opportunity attack against you things like that and yeah. that maybe that would be like an action or something mm -hmm. to do on your turn now some you could also talk about that some races have i mean i think three cream have this like a jump distance yeah uh the so do tabaxi? grown mm -hmm. tabaxi don't have a have set jump they have a climbing oh, i thought they had like a leaping but no. that you could give them a similar kind of thing, but that is a slide. Like yeah. a, maybe they have something called torpedo, yeah. and they're allowed. To, they can lay down and kind of go yeah. and like shoot you, themselves. But you might not necessarily want to go the full twenty five feet or something like that. But you always have to go yeah. twenty five. You feet. can't oh, control it. You just go and you just shoot. I need them to be able to carry medium sized creatures on their back on their back mm -hmm. while oh, they're no. sliding. Mm -hmm. I I need that. Uh -huh. Okay, we'll work it say. in. We'll, uh, yeah. All right, fine. Thank yeah. you. you I, we'll I just I just need to see like a paladin like holding onto the back of a penguin. A battle just... penguin. <laughs> the penguin like... is like a barbarian, so he's got like an axe in each hand, and the paladin riding on his back yeah. in the battle. As they just slide down the hill. <laughs> I need that. That's amazing. See, thank you, you said that, and now I just imagined like an evil society where the queen has like enslaved people, and she's in a palaquin that is set on just many penguins that are like <laughs> sliding underneath it, and you're like, oh no. Insert pun here about penguin and palanquin being very close words. I couldn't think of it in time. Let's move on. Palaguin. Paling. Uh, no, the yeah, penguin. it's pangolins. Pangolin. That's a different animal. <laughs> <laughs> pangolin is like yeah. The, yeah. The, it's the an armadillo. horrible yeah. pinecone armadillo. Yeah, they're not horrible, they're yeah. adorable. But horrible adorable. There you go. He's got a new catchphrase. If you could see the look on his face. <laughs> I'm not horrible, I'm adorable. Um, I think that the really cool thing about what we all just talked about with these different concepts is we were trying to base it in wording already used in D&D, &D, using the already established rules mm -hmm. of just adjusting a bit and overall as like our take-home tidbit for this episode i think that is sort of the general takeaway is that if you base it in rules that already exist abilities that already exist it will always be not only easier to understand but it will be more interesting because those rules often will then impact other abilities they'll interact they're built, interestingly yeah they're, they're already built in other. so if you just base it in like being prone or you base it in kind of like a three cream like jump ability those already work with the game in certain ways, and so that allows you to also do that. Instead of trying to rewrite it from scratch, start with that kind of a base and, and move from there. Mm -hmm. I think one thing that's interesting, too, is people all the time will try to make playable races that are animals. And the first look, to me, was more, like, slightly based in science. Like, they have swim speeds, they have these things. Mm -hmm. And then the other one was, like, kind of just, sure, they look like penguins, but they are their own thing. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying one is good or one is bad, but it's an interesting perspective to have, like, when you are making a playable race based on an animal, do you base it in the scientific facts about that animal that already exists? Like, we looked up, can penguins see in the dark? Yeah. You don't have to. Like, I mean, it's bothered me for forever, because I had a druid that turned into a cat when I was DMing one time. <laughs> oh, gosh. And she wanted to see in the dark, and technically cats don't have dark vision, mm -hmm. and I called BS on that. Well, which, like, cats in real life don't have, like dark vision but they just have better eyes than humans and they just can see in the dark yeah you know and they're they are known for being able to see in the dark so i totally <laughs> literally the potion in witcher to give you vision in night is called cat's eye yep, isn't, exactly. is, isn't it say in, in tabaxi or, or something else don't, in the don't rules? tabaxi have tabaxi yeah, it, have dark, dark vision, vision no, but because... it says it says like like a cat like it has dark vision like a cat uh -huh. but then cats don't in D &D. so it has dark vision like a cat in the sense that it does not <laughs> <laughs> anyway so i guess yeah to actually don't really have dark vision everyone adjust your games that's uh, that's the mistake not the other way there we go yeah. but all, what i'm trying to say uh, it, it it's say at mm. i'm trying to say at uh, is <laughs> it's an interesting perspective when you are making an animal 
you can pull from the scientific facts about that animal and say, how does this translate into a D&D ability? Yeah. Or you can just go the route of saying, like, I am making a fantasy creature of my own creation. It's not based in science. Like, you could say penguins are the strongest and they can light themselves on fire and be fine. Like, penguins if you, have immunity to fire. Yeah, like, if you want to do that, you can. Um, you know, you just have to decide. In my opinion, personally, if you are basing it on science, you need to lean into that more. Whereas if you're not basing mm-hmm. it on science, you need to lean away from that. That's my yeah. opinion. I agree. Yeah. Uh, embrace the weird fantasy of it. And say that these aren't just penguins. They're something close to penguins that are different in ways you wouldn't expect. Yeah. Stuff like that. And definitely ask yourself, what is it about this animal that would make a player want to be it? Yeah. And then don't get distracted by other abilities. Yeah. Like Focus try to, on that. to stay on that. Like. Mm-hmm. Do people want to be penguins because they are cute and fluffy and can slide around? Then make it that. And just don't get away. And maybe that's not why you want to be a penguin and cool, go a different direction, but just don't get too distracted. I mean, that's sort of like what we talked about with the barbarians, mm-hmm. uh, where... It, yeah, went, it, it got it too got, focused in one thing, but then also got distracted by other abilities that had nothing to do with being yeah. the strongest. So just stay on track with whatever the initial motivation for playing that race is. Yeah. Definitely. Thanks, Bean, for bringing that penguin yeah. race. Are you going to be playing a penguin anytime soon? I, I am hoping to because I want to take... We have been wanting to do like a mousekin kind yeah. of like animal campaign. Yeah, I know that Well, Mouse Guard is a yeah. very cool other system to play yeah. um, as I have some friends that play that. Um, but I think what I want to do is take these two different creations of penguins and combine them. them. Maybe we'll do a side quest where we do that. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, that'd be fun. Maybe we'll uh, look for that on the channel at some point. Side quest where we we do our own penguin race mm-hmm. and see what we can go over there. Maybe we'll even make a fun like sub race or a, a class Ooh, a for seal. penguins or something. We could penguins versus seals. Penguins oh, versus no. seals. I like it. All right, then we'll move on to me. I brought this week um, a monster. Now, no, besides yourself, what did ha, you bring? Ha, 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 ha. Okay. We are we are just. At each other's throats today. I don't know. <laughs> Mostly all it directed at Thomas. <laughs> Thomas is dishing as yeah, well. You're right. So this is by um, S Star K M or S S T A R K M, um, and they've done actually quite a few monsters in this oeuvre in this sort of genre. Um, if you are at all familiar with the video game Dark Souls, you'll know that it is a game based on. Um, punishing difficulty and the struggle against insurmountable odds and the rewarding feeling of overcoming a challenge that seemed like incredibly great. And so this creator has made a few of these monsters from or inspired by monsters or bosses in Dark Souls meant to punish even the most impressive of parties. So this is Gwyn, Lord of Sunlight. And so as a as a nod to a, a YouTube channel that I enjoy very much, Vati Vidya, I'll read this little lore intro. Lord of Sunlight. The first Lord Soul that was found was the Light Soul, discovered by Gwyn during the Age of Ancients. <laughs> the Light Soul gave Gwyn tremendous power, transforming him from a simple man into a god. Using his newfound spears made of pure sunlight, Gwyn ripped through his enemies and sat himself atop the great throne of Anno Londo. So this is, um... It, he, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so he just sunburns his enemies? Yeah, pretty much. You know, just a mild sunburn. No, he is the Lord of Sunlight, and in the like Dark Souls cosmology, he's like the Zeus-type figure. He is the all-powerful king of gods who... Uh, threw down uh, on the everlasting dragons and created the Age of Fire. Uh, also, I believe, spoiler alert, I believe he's the final boss of Dark the first, Souls. The first, of Dark the first Souls. Dark Souls. And it is one of the most emotionally moving moments. Um, you you assume throughout most of the game that he will be the typical evil king um, archetype where you go in and he will give you some sort of speech or monologue and you go into the final boss room and you find Gwyn withered away and sad as the age of fire is coming to an end and the boss music is just somber piano music as it is much more similar to putting someone out of their misery than defeating a malicious force it's a it's a good game you should check dark souls out but let's look at the monster now gwyn lord of sunlight is a medium humanoid he's lawful good 
His armor class is 25. Oh, boy. Got Good enough roll, for me. Gotta roll better than a 25. And I, I believe it says in parentheses, King's, King's breastplate, breastplate, which means that's something you could steal. Yes, that would be an item that he is probably wearing that you could get after. He His hit points are 575. Okay. Fair uh, enough. 50 D8 plus 350. He's got a speed of 30 feet. Let's look down through... Um, his saving throws, he gets plus 15 to dexterity saves, sure. plus 19 to wisdom saves, plus 17 to charisma saves. So what you're saying is we can't mind control him. Well, I mean, we'll look at that in a moment. <laughs> oh my gosh. His skills, he gets plus 15 to acrobatics, plus 19 to perception, plus so you can't sneak up on him. Plus 17 to persuasion, plus 16 to religion, interestingly, which I think is fun. I mean, he, he is, is a god. He's a god. He would know about his own religion. He I was feel. there at the like founding of the world. Uh, he is immune to fire, lightning, and radiant damage. Fair enough. Okay. He is resistant to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. Mm. It does not say from non-magical mm-hmm. weapons. Fair enough. He is immune to being charmed, exhausted, or frightened. Well, there you go. He has a passive perception of 20. Okay. Which, I'll be honest... I don't think that's right. Really? Well... If their perception is plus 19, their passive perception should be 29. I was gonna say. Yeah, that's fair. This is just plus 10. That is, that might be just an oversight, I guess. Yeah. He can speak common and giant, which is there are giants in Dark Souls that like worked for him and he kind of enslaved giants. Um, he's a challenge rating 30. Cool. He gives your party 155,000 XP. So let's look at some of his... So um, I, if I solo him, then I get to be level 30? I can't wait. For, I think so. I can't wait for my strongest barbarian uh, penguin to fight this guy. Right? Oh, one, no. Uh, 1v1. Yeah, 1v1, so chubby penguin. Challenge rating 30, for those unfamiliar with the challenge rating system. It's, it's, an, it's not one. It's an interesting system. No, it is actually. Is I it? Mean, the Tarasca is challenge rating 30, I yeah. believe. You, I thought they didn't go above 20. Uh, so you gotta get a wear to the were oh rask would be the, the what if he was a were to rask? No. no. Okay. <laughs> so challenge rating thirty. How it bounces out is challenge ratings. The numbers uh, mean a party of four that what that is that level would be a roughly fair fight. So right. if you had a party of four level thirty characters, this should be roughly balanced. For reference, uh, you can only go up to level twenty. Uh, for reference, uh, unless you're aware to rest. <laughs> unless you you're aware to rest. Unless you're aware to rest. Then you can be level 24, apparently. Which is still not strong enough. For reference, <laughs> where to asks aren't a thing you can be. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Uh, Mercy, did you want to whisper into the microphone as well? Do you want your turn? Hi, my name is Mercy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're supposed to start it with for reference. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the king's ultra great sword. Uh, Gwyn's weapon attacks are magical. When Gwyn attacks with his weapon, the weapon deals an extra 8d8 radiant damage included in the attack. Mm. He has legendary resistance, 3 per day. If Gwyn fails a saving throw, he can choose to succeed instead, 3 times per day. He has magical resistance. Well, Gwyn has advantage on saving throws against spells and other magical effects. So if you were saying we can't mind control him, yeah, you would really cannot make it. Even if he wasn't immune to Charmed, uh, we really can't, though. And then we've got his actions. Multi-attack. So on his turn, Gwyn can make up to three attacks oh. with his Greatsword and Sunlight Spears. Uh, greatsword, melee weapon attack, plus 19 to hit. Okay. If it hits, it deals a 2d8 plus 10 slashing damage, uh, average 19, or plus 36 radiant damage, 8d8. His Sunlight Spear... Gwyn manifests a spear of pure sunlight into his hand and hurls it at an enemy. One creature within 120 feet must make a DC 27 dexterity saving throw. And they only take 56 radiant damage on a failed save and half as much on a success. And and he can do this three times. Three times a turn. I'm losing all hope as you read this to me. Well, that's good. That's what Dark Souls is all about. Lose all hope. Prepare you to, want to die. enter here. Prepare why, to die. Why would you recommend someone play that? So the point of it, though, is this is purposefully and frustratingly challenging to the degree where you would feel like you could never beat it. Mm-hmm. The moment when you beat it then feels incredible because you have trained and you have practiced and you have exactly the plan. You've memorized all his moves. You have gotten all the magic items you need. You've gotten the specific armor and weapons that will help you to defeat him. And when you finally take this guy down... Mm. So you, do you get to respawn when he kills you, or are you just dead? Well, in D&D, you die. Okay, so that's... Dark Souls, you respawn. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
So it's not the same. Oh, no. It's, it's, it's exactly the same. I'm saying that when you make your new party and you re-roll for the better stats and you try to get the magic items this time and you run the whole campaign again. For the years it took to get there. Exactly. Then it'll feel really great when you beat him 15 years later. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. <laughs> He also has legendary actions, in case anyone wanted to know about that. Yeah, I that. didn't notice that. Uh, he can take three legendary actions, choosing from the options below. Only one legendary action can be used at a time, and only at the end of another creature's turn. That's regular legendary action text. He regains all spent legendary action at the start of his turn. Great sword. He makes a great sword attack. So this is things he can do on not his turn. A uh, hail of spears costs two actions. Gwyn calls down a hundred spears made of pure lightning from the heavens. All creatures within 20 feet must make a DC 27 dexterity saving throw, taking 36 lightning damage on a fail and half as much on a success. Just 20 feet? <laughs> mm-hmm. Just 20 feet. DC 27? Yep, just 27. That's like at the end of Hero when they like shoot the hail of, arrows, of arrows at the guy yeah, exactly. and there's just like a shape of his body. Yeah. Soul of Light is his final legendary action. Uh, Cost three actions, Gwyn emanates pure sunlight from his body, burning others while healing himself. (gasps) Each creature within 10 feet must make a DC 27 constitution saving throw, taking 27 fire damage on a failed save. Weirdly not radiant damage this time. Fire damage for some reason. Hmm. Um, Or half as much damage on a successful one. Gwyn then recovers hit points Equal to the amount of damage dealt up to his maximum. In addition, he now emits 60 feet of bright light until his next turn. Oh, well, you'll at least be able to see him. You can see him now. That's fun. He can't hide, I guess. I will say, he has lots of different kinds of damage. He has radiant damage. He does, yeah. He has lightning lightning damage. He has actual spears that show up, and he has fire damage. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's cool, though, because if you're like, oh, he just does radiant damage, you can't, like take a potion of radiant resistance or something and then because then go he can change it up on you because yeah. then he can just get all different kinds of damage so yeah. that makes him even harder to deal with because and of the variety it is also um based in the flavor as well because he crafted the first lightning bolts but he also has um a soul um, a lord soul which has um, the fire in it from the age of fire that started the fire um that he has one of the flames and so he has both like radiant flame and lightning all kind of together in his Mm -hmm. um, aesthetic but yeah this is just a creature meant to kill a party you know you ever want to just kill a party you're tired of tarasks queen lord of sunlight just shows up you know maybe you've been playing your campaign for three years and you want your party to all have like really glorious deaths but you're ready to do something new you don't want an epilogue of so they all went home and became farmers just just fight this guy and go out in a beautiful battle. What I appreciate about Gwyn, Lord of Sunlight, here is that he's just a regular-sized human. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is almost more terrifying to me than, like, a Tarrasque is terrifying because it's so big. And you often think of the higher a combat or a challenge rating mm-hmm. is, the, the bigger the monster, like, physically. But this is just a guy who could be sitting at a bar and then just looks at you sideways and everyone in the bar dies. Like, he could just be a normal-sized person. That's horrifying to me Mm -hmm. for some reason that, like, there's no sign that he is a huge, unknowable monster. He could just snap his fingers and a town is gone. Yeah. Well, the image that they have here, he kind of has this really badass but also kind of tired-looking old man. Yeah, exactly. And I have ranted about this to Onog, and I don't know why this is a thing I get so fixated on, but in the Spiderwit Chronicles movie... Um, yeah. books I have not read, but <laughs> I went to see the movie, and I have a lot of problems with it. But um, You and the movie-going audience yes. of the early 2000s. Um, but they jump right in, and you meet the bad guy, like, right away, the big bad. And they they talk him up, and they talk him up, like, oh, this, this super evil, terrible bad guy. And then they see him, and he's this, like, unassuming old man in a black cloak. And he's very good at being like, oh, well, I just don't know what's going to happen to you if you don't get that book for me. And I thought that was actually really scary. And in the movie, they're like, oh, what? You think he's scary, that old man? Mm -hmm. And then there's a scene where everyone leaves and they secretly watch him transform into this giant, hideous ogre. And in my opinion, that is way less scary. Yeah. Like as soon as I saw him, undercut it. As soon as I saw him as this like, well, you do the Like he literally has a voice like that. 
And I was like, oh, but ogres, to me, they are... Or like onions. (laughs) Ogres are a known quantity. (laughs) Continue. Uh, I can't. (laughs) What have you done? I broke a bean. You made me cry. (laughs) Just like an onion. You were just on a roll this episode. You just Uh, just got the jokes. I finally got into my groove, I feel. (laughs) Anyway, but just something about, like, a great big monster that is, like, a surmountable evil. Right. But whereas, what if it's just a person, like, if for some reason you could scan a body, you know, there's that, like, um, the thing where you have a superpower that allows you to see, like, how easily someone could kill you, and you meet Superman and he's a 10, Mm. but, like, you would just meet him as Clark Kent, Mm. and you're like, what? If you had that kind of thing and you were seeing every single person in the bar was a one-fourth challenge rating, and then one guy was a 30 challenge rating. But he just looks like a regular He just looks dude. like a guy. That's so much you scarier. You just back out of the box. <laughs> just back it up. Just back it up. <laughs> Guys, we found Zeus. I'm going to leave. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love that idea of him as just just a person that you wouldn't otherwise know. I mean, he obviously has sort of a, a deific radiance, if you will. Like, it seems like you'd know. But I like the idea that maybe you wouldn't. This could even be a character you underestimate earlier. And then later in the campaign, you come back and you're like, oh no, he was that guy all along. And he just snaps his fingers and your like rogue is gone. Yeah. Just (laughs) like you hear legends of like the, the God that brought light and killed the dragons. And you're like, yeah, okay. And then like, Uh you're like, it's Steve. Yeah. It's Steve from Walmart. (laughs) No way. Was that guy? Yeah. Or even if he was shiny and radiant, having him be the same size as you, even, just, that changes it. It does. It feels almost more intimidating to me. Yeah, when you see a giant monster, you just go, how giant he is, is how hard he will be to kill. Yeah. But then if they're your size, you're just like, I have no idea. Like, I have no idea how much health you have left. Like, on, yeah. on that note, I would love to make a series of gigantic monsters that are just challenge rating one. Or something where they are just very easy to kill, but for some reason they are huge. <laughs> they're really big, but they're made of glass. It's <laughs> like a big dumb cyclops. You just like poke him and he's like, oh. He falls over like crying. It's just, it's just a cyclops it's with like, brittle okay. bones disease. <laughs> oh, no. Just, oh. That was sad. I, I just thought you were saying that he's like a wimp. So it's like Yeah, that's ha- what I meant. He has a lot of HP, but as soon as you hurt him, he's like, oh no, I'm just going to leave. <laughs> I love that as like a DM choice. Like, they think it's going to be the boss fight, but it's, it's not. like, oh, fine. If you, I'll leave the cave. Just stop. <laughs> I do not want to see, though. <laughs> we talked about penguins earlier. Uh-huh. Oh, no. You're, like, fighting some sort of feral penguins, but then one starts walking out, and it's the emperor penguin. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, electricity is crackling around it. Mm-hmm. And it, like, looks at one of your party members, and they vanish. <laughs> and everyone's, what? And it's just, like, above its head, it just goes, challenge rating. 50. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> but it just looks like all the rest of the penguins. Yeah. He's not like a huge flaming penguin. No, he's, he's just regular size, but you just now know we're fighting a god. <laughs> yeah, very it's good. It's like when you're playing a video game and everyone has a red health bar over their head and you're like, okay, okay, you do a power attack and you're like, it oh no. Yeah, when you see like how it barely it went down, you're in, just like, I'll just leave. In the first um, Destiny game, Destiny is a, a like sci-fi shooting game by Bungie and there was an, an open area you could explore in the beginning of the game and in one place in like a dark cave under another area that you never were supposed to go to. You just could find it if you were exploring around. Um, they have the red health bars above their enemies and they all show their level. So they're like level five, level 10. And that's, you can judge the encounter based on that. They had a single enemy down there that was like a knight made of bone and ash. And when you came down, its health bar just said level question mark, question mark. And when you shot it, its health did not change, and a little note that said immune comes up. And you went, whoa, <laughs> let's get out of here. <laughs> Time to leave. This isn't the right place to be at all. So, but then later in the game, interesting, after a couple expansions, when your character levels had been increased, he was no longer immune. And so you ended up being able to go back to that area at like the end of the game and finally defeat him. And it was it's pretty that's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. I guess one of the things we're saying here is, yo, homebrew community, like, let's make some more unassuming huge bosses. Yeah. Like, 
be more creative in our boss like um, visuals. Yeah. Just because mm-hmm. they're really powerful doesn't mean they need to be really big. And while we love wear tarasks and we love all that, we still do. If you want to make a gargantuan penguin, like please do it. Yeah. <laughs> the, the feathers that crushed the world. <laughs> he slides through a whole town and just <laughs> destroys it. <laughs> <him. laughs> Just but, a were esque penguin. I mean, maybe that's... Some, and there might be more of these yeah. out there that we need to look for. I'm going to try to see yeah. if I can bring something like that. But yeah, like, like let's make more unassuming, crazy bosses. I, I, mm-hmm. If you have one that you have made, or if you want to make one and send it our way, that would be super awesome. We'd love to check it out. Definitely. Definitely yeah. Jinx. Oh, yep. We're jinxed now. Yep. So you can't speak. And we have... Uh, minus oh, well, our right. oh no! All right, you want to <laughs> crown of madness on? Oh, okay, okay. All right, that's where I think we're going to end the the episode. Thanks everybody for listening. Um, send as always any interesting, uh, creative, fun, silly homebrews that you find our way. Put them in the comments below. Uh, we like to look through those and see what we can find as things to bring. And we'll always shout you out if we get one um, sent from you. Uh, we appreciate all the creators whose work that we reviewed today. And we hope that you guys will join us next time. Keep on adventuring.